Hey, Brian Di, the hitman in the house. Um, yeah, I thought he was hiding there for a minute because uh, his Buddha kind of went to, you know, what in a handbasket. Yeah, he was. He was a little quiet after. Yeah, that. he was. Uh, yeah, but um, but it's, nonetheless, he's still a champ in my book. No, no doubt about oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we're waiting for Dave Goulet, NASCAR Northwest Tour starter to call. You know, so I, I'm excited to talk to him because you know he was here for so long. And he raced down there at Willamette. He did the local stuff. He built cars and stuff here. And it's just going to be interesting to see what the biggest difference is, you know, for him. Because he went back there, and he was Jason Keller's car chief uh, for several years, you know. And then he's worked. I mean, he's done just about every, you know. As far as uh, body work and fabrication go, um, it, it, he's there's just none better, I don't think. I mean, yeah, it's 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 a little odd as far as racing in the Northwest. We're we're kind of in a little bubble here, and and when you get to travel outside of it, it's different, you know. And and you pick up that with any little region you go to. So it's it's always fun to travel around and and see what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Well, hey, while I got a quick minute here, I'm gonna uh, break away shortly. I'll pl uh, play an ad, and uh, so we'll be back uh, after this short break. Here, here. You know, over the road, going from race to race, I get to see a lot of shops. And I love the way the folks at O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies help keep their customers rolling under the checkered flag. Great part selection, awesome customer service, and a custom fab shop make O'Hagan's the racer's edge. So stop by today and see for yourself why O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies is the racer's edge. You can find them on Facebook or you can call them at 209-201-1829 and tell them that Terry Bridges sent you. All right, welcome back. Uh, you know, uh, Joe Penatel listening. Hey, JP, good to – thanks for tuning in and supporting the Northwest Race Report. It said, when Ryan's quiet, be afraid. Oh, I guarantee they're they're plotting something. They uh, they always come back, and they are some fast guys. And, and you know, and Joe's, uh, Joe's stuff is no slouch as well. Oh, man, uh, let me just say, uh, you know, and – how deserving was Brad Berg? I mean, uh, y you talk about good guys, man. I mean, oh, absolutely. You know, Brad's Brad's one of the best. And, and uh, you know, he had a tough uh, – he actually had the flip a couple years back, and, and he hasn't had the best luck. So it was really cool to see him get this win. For you know? sure. For sure. I mean, it, it could – I mean, obviously you guys all wanted to win it, but, you know, if, if you can't win it, he, he's definitely one of the guys. I mean, you're not – I mean, he's just a – just a humble, modest guy, and he's a he's a heck of a he's a heck of a race car driver. I mean, absolutely. Actually, the the heat race that him and I had was probably the most fun I've had racing this year, if not you know did the it, last few years. Did it surprise you when he went upstairs? I I had no idea there was a lane up there, and, and he made it work. <laughs> so it was. Yeah, um, you know, Trevor Lawton says his dad actually worked on with the Southwest Tour, so uh, that's cool stuff. And uh, you know, Michael Laub uh, Laub was fast. I mean, he just got he just got into mess. So yeah, you know, the first couple of laps were a little crazy there. People were going forward, people were going backwards, but he he managed to work his way back up. It was pretty impressive, uh, impressive run. Yeah, and two three sixties, and uh, man, oh man. So we're still waiting for our next in the seat guest, Dave Goulet, to give us a buzz. And uh, boy, I, I hope he remind I, I reminded him, but. Uh, I don't know. I guess uh, I guess we're gonna see here. So we'll just kind of keep kicking it and give him a minute to uh, uh, get in here. But uh, he might be a little nervous. This is the big time. Yeah, it is. I mean, he is big time <laughs> though. It shouldn't be uh, um, that way. But you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what's going on. Oh boy, let's see. Oh, Christy Heron Mayo said he's planning a hit. <laughs> well, we you better hope not, Christy, because uh, I don't know. The, the hit man, he is, uh, he's, he's been known to, oh, Gleason syndrome. Oh, ouch. Talk about ouch. That's crazy. That's a nice little jab there. Yeah, I saw Christy, my uh, little new chassis on the way. Is that what I yeah, saw? Yeah, a purple one even. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Daddy-O got that for her, so that's, that's pretty good. I thought she was fast enough with the stuff she had, so. Yeah, I, well, I mean, hey, let's, uh, I, you know, you could tell she wasn't racing it uh, like she should, right? You know, I mean, it, you could tell it was somebody else's stuff. I mean, that that's pretty tough. Uh, that's that's pretty tough to do. Well, especially the difference. You know, she's uh, she's been on two strokes, um, you know, forever, and going into the four stroke, it, it definitely drives differently, and um, you got to get used to it. So, but she just she honestly just had a little bit of bad luck, and or else she would have been right up there. I think she I think she had the speed for sure. 
yeah, it, she's definitely uh, she's definitely all that in a bag of chips. I mean, it was so cool to meet her. Well, I'm going to call him then, and uh, we're going to see what's going on here. So uh, we're going to give Dave Goulet a call, see what's what's going on. Hopefully he's not busy. I know he's been working. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, the person you called has a voicemail. Box. I don't know where he is, so I'm going to have to get on him about that. So uh, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, Slideway Saturday, uh, pretty pretty good show. Uh, it was a little light due to the um, previous uh, BK the weekend before. So, you know, the turnout wasn't wasn't huge. I mean, of course, what were we expecting? I mean, it hasn't been huge all year, but but still, it was a little bit lighter than normal. But let me tell you, the racing was still ripper. I mean, it's always nice when when you guys are there too, but. Um, KT Light went to uh, the guy that's been on fire. He swept the BK, Corey Markham. I mean, yeah, no, they they got that thing figured out for sure, and uh, and he's been looking really good. You know, I know uh, him and Hager have had a couple of good battles uh, this year too. Yeah, really good. He looks super good. Um, and then uh, KT Heavy went to Renee Angel. She was fast time in in heavy with a I think it was like a ten point eight eight seven or something. So. She was, uh, I guess they were unhappy. Oh, there he is. Mr. Goulet, you made it. Carrie Bridges, how are you? Good, my man. I was, I was thought you might have forgot about us there for a second. But, uh, hey, I'm sitting here. My, my guest host is Shane One Time Smith. Uh, you might know him, you might not, but uh, he, he's a pretty solid uh, racer here in the Northwest. So, uh, Shane, this is Dave Goulet. Dave, nice to talk to you. Hey, good, good talk to you, too. So, so how did you get one time? Uh, that uh, that happened at a goldfish race uh, <laughs> where I, I won, and there may have been a little bit of celebrating, uh, and I don't think anyone thought I would ever win anything again. So uh, I believe uh. at the time Jimmy Johnson was five-time, and Ronnie Cox called me one time. <laughs> so it just kind of uh. stuck. <laughs> So okay, all right, we'll, we'll we'll buy that. So so Dave, for our listeners, some of them we got a lot of Carters in the house, which you know the game, but they probably need to know a little bit more about you. So so tell us, get us familiar with who Dave Goulet is. Well, at at present, um, I am crew chief for the number forty forty Arca entry by C two Motorsports, which is Carter Motorsports. Um, Donnie Nornberger is my driver. Um, we just got done with tech today in Daytona. Long day. That's the, uh, that's the short version. Wow. So, so tell us what, what's the, what's the atmosphere like back there? I mean, uh, when you're there, I mean, is it something where you walk in, you can feel the competition in the air? I mean, is it, is it something you can feel? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're all race back here. Um, where uh, my last residence in Mooresville, North Carolina, which is Race City, USA, um, every street corner has a race team on it, whether it's uh, an ARCA, a nationwide, a truck team, a late model team that may run Hickory Speedway, all over the place. Wow. Well, you know, you were here. You were here for so long in the Northwest, and you were a major player in the Northwest Tour when it first kicked off, and then you ran the Open Comp stuff, you know, before that. But so when you went back there ten or fifteen years ago, what what is the what's the biggest difference that you see between um, uh, what, what the biggest difference between how it was here and and how it is back there? Number number of racetracks. There is, at any given Friday night or Saturday night, there is more than likely seven racetracks I could go to within an hour and a half. Wow. <laughs> I'm, je- I'm jealous. Uh, that's cr- You know, I, I, the, I got a question on the chat line from, from Ray Smith. He's the president of uh, the Snake River Carters, and he says, uh, what did Dave do back in the day at Willamette Speedway? What did I do back yeah. in the day at Willamette Speedway? Yeah. <laughs> Kicked butt. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, he, you ran, uh, well, Sam Jeffers was your car owner, right? Yes. Yes, and, it was. Okay. Prepare your torque converter. 
Wow. Yeah, so what did he do, Ray, in a nutshell? Uh, he, the guy was good. And he, how, how many championships did you get down there? Uh, two championships in a row, 90, 90 and 91. Um, in 90, we won 16 out of 24 races. And then 91, and not, yeah, 90, I won 16 out of 24. And 91, we won 18 out of 22. Oh, just dominating well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, you know, I was, luckily I was blessed to come out of that camp, you know, but, uh, so my mentor for many, many years. But, so, so the big difference is number of racetracks. So, now, I'm I'm looking here, I got my stuff here, okay, so we've got that, the biggest difference you see from back here to there. So, how is, how has racing changed since it was, since you remember it? 10 or 15 years ago here and, and to today? I mean, is it, has there been a, a, a big... Lot, there's a lot more rules. They, uh, they, they, they tighten the box. The gray areas are, are not as gray as they used to be. It's more black and white. Uh, you're right or you go home. Um, like any other, in, any, other, any other series or all the series, they've just, they just, they try to cut the costs and, you know, like any... Anything we went through, even in the past, every time they tried to cut costs, it just cost more. Right, which I, you know, I don't know why that is. Well, I, I, you know, uh, we see it a lot uh, when people try doing a, a spec tire, um, which can be a good thing. But you know, it, it comes down to if you can throw a new set of tires on every time you hit the track, you're just gonna, you know, up the cost. So, so um, Dave, am I right in saying that that racing is a matter of the haves and the have-nots? Yeah, there's yeah, yeah. In a nutshell, there's still quite a few independents um, running race to race type of teams. Um, the ARCA team I'm working for now is we're very underfunded. Um, basically, he's got a, a decent fleet of cars, and they're getting better and better. And he rents the rides out to drivers. Um, like we have Cassie Gainis out of Arizona, who ran? He, she runs late models. She's running one of our cars. Wow! And so, 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 really. Um, and, and when I say the haves and have nots, it's just like Shane was saying. You know, you can go to a spec tire, but everybody knows a, a spec tire with five races on it is not going to be as good as a spec tire with no races on it. So, you, I don't. I don't think you're ever going to change that. I mean, there's you know, there's always going to be the people that can afford it without question, and those that are not. I mean. Yeah, correct. For I sure. A, okay, here is a here's a case in point. Um, NASCAR Top Series. They went to the they went to the, first. They went to the COT car. Now they've got the Gen Six. The Gen Six was supposed to tighten the competition back in the day before the COT car when we were hanging our bodies and we just had massive templates to fit. We could twist them all up, and you know we'd spend all winter. We could get twenty counts of down to fifty counts of downforce. And now they're spending all winter to get three counts of downforce. Wow! And so the cost, so the cost is the ones that can afford it. They just spend more time at the wind tunnel. So your your cost per downforce count is just skyrockets. Right. So it's always something you're you're going to give up something to gain something. I guess that's what it, what it amounts yeah, to. Yeah. I mean, the, the teams that have the money to spend are going to spend it. You know, and and. I just think, but when you open it up a little bit more, it allows the the lower funded teams to be, you know, maybe a little bit more on par. Uh, yeah, sure. that's a good point. You know, and 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 you start, you know, I I think too though a lot of it is is how you change the rules. Let's face it. I mean, um, imagination, doing your homework, um, creativity. I mean, I don't know. For me, it's my belief is that's what allowed the little guy to run with the big guy for for all these years. And, you know, you, you start taking some of that away, and, and and making it be spec this, and you can't buy that, and you you know you've got to buy this O ring and that you know this gasket and this and that, and it's got to be this, it's got to be original. You've just taken the imagination and ingenuity and all that stuff out, and that's the very thing that I think helped the the small guy run with the big guy. I mean, I, that's just my opinion. But w what do you think of that, Dave? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And now, you know, and the, the cost, of, of course, anytime you, anytime you regulate and now 
the bigger teams, they've got a slew of engineers that are crunching numbers. 